Hello everybody, good to be back. Today we are going to be looking at the black side of the Alakine Defense for pawns attack. So with that I'm going to flip the board. Now in the uh, yesterday's video I made a video uh, looking at the white side of the four pawns attack. So if you want to uh, be interested in uh, learning that opening check out that video uh, I should have put them both together but there was a lot of games so I just concentrated on one side of the board so again my method briefly is follows I look at a bunch of miniature games which are games under 30 moves sometimes the games are really short and that's uh, to me the best way to learn an opening uh, at the beginning is just immerse yourself in just some uh, short uh, games where you can see uh, one way just uh, excuse me one side just having its way over the other side with little interference that that way you can see the pl plans are real clear from the other side so if you really want to learn this opening I, I suggest checking it out from the white side first look at the uh, my other video uh, Alicon's defense uh, four pawns attack from the white side and then come and check this video out so we're going to get right into it and we're going at blitz uh, speed with these miniature games so first uh, this game is from 1999 uh, <clears throat> a player named uh, Bolivar Hibero Gonzalez with the white pieces and on the black side we have uh, Brazilian uh, Grandmaster Rafael Letao Letao Okay, who was rated 25.74 at the time. And again, you're going to see what it looks like when Black just has his way, when things go right for Black. So here we are in our four pawns attack position. D takes, takes, Bishop comes out. E6, all looks normal. Bishop E3, Knight C6, attacking the uh, center here. Bishop E2, and this is more like modern approach, not bringing the Knight out too early. Um, not to get deep into theory, but move that is surprisingly effective here after knight f3 is just moving the bishop again okay because after this knight comes out e5 is protected and there's many lines where uh d5 is played and then you go into the uh lines with knight before uh, takes knight before etc so there's a lot of theory uh, a lot of water under the bridge there but uh bishop g4 is pretty effective there and also queen d7 so anyway Bishop e2 is often played as like a delaying move to prevent the pin of the knight. Bishop e7. And now knight f3 comes out. Castles. Castles. Again, everything looking pretty respectable. f6. The attack on the center here. And now queen b3. a5. a4. Knight b4. Knight e1. And here... Black, excuse me, white starts to lose his way a little bit as he uh, neglects his center somewhat. F takes e5, d takes e5, and now knight d7 with the attack on e5. So we can see already when white, excuse me, when black is getting his way, uh, he's able to neutralize the huge center that white puts up and put tremendous uh, pre pressure on it. And he also uh, is able to play around the center. That's another theme too. It's not, because um, basically the center is only effective if you're restricting the opponent's pieces right if you're not really restricting the opponent's movement then the center the center is um uh, not effective at all there's two things that make a good center one is that you restrict the opponent's movement of his pieces and also that your center is, is mobile and you can see here that black's pieces are not really restricted and the center has been not only broken down and destroyed for the most part, but now it's fixed. And now that pawn in E5 is just a liability for white. So these are the things that black wants. Battle continues. Queen A3. B3. Queen C7. Again, we'll put more pressure on E5. Some trades. And again, you see black just playing around the E5 pawn. E5 pawn is not even a factor uh, for black to worry about here. And at this point, there's nothing that um, white can do about this deadly pin against the king there. And he resigns. Right into the next game. 
This is a game between a, a player named uh, Jurahus and uh, 2484 versus, um, uh, I think, Magnus Carlsen's old trainer, uh, uh, Agdestein, uh, 2588. Okay. This game took place in 2000. Again, four pawns attack. And this is kind of like a slightly offbeat slash modern variation by black and by not blocking the uh, c pawn uh black often intends to play uh, early c5 basically um you know wanting to be able to use this this pawn as a, a attack against the center as opposed to blocking it here with uh, knight c6 bishops are traded off their c5 d takes knight comes in queen e2 d takes Knight takes e5. So just remember this, that the principle is basically the same. Is that as black, you want to tear down and demobilize, uh, and cripple the white center uh, as much as possible. So the methods of doing so are different. Sometimes black will play f6. These are little markers that you should be, you know, notes you should be taking. Sometimes black plays f6 to attack e5. Sometimes black plays c5. Right, using the pawns to attack uh, d4. Sometimes black will attack right away with knight c6, right? A more classical variation. And then maybe later on follow up with uh, c5. But the principle is clear. And that's the vigorous attack against the white center. Notice that uh, white center is pretty much abolished. Except the knight on e5 at this point, right? 12 moves in. After having mighty four pawn center. Right here, 12 moves in, it's no more. F6, driving away that knight, leaving the weakness on uh, uh, E6, though. Here's a little trap that black sets. G6, knight takes G6, H takes G6, queen takes, and now queen D4. And this is, a, a, you know, age-old theme, basically giving up the, the rook in one of the corners. Sometime the queen will... Uh, Take this rook in this corner, right? If um, I'm thinking of the Frankenstein Dracula variation in the Vienna, where the queen captures the rook in the corner, and basically what you're trading off, off is activity um, for for material, which is a lot of time, uh, you know, proves to be fatal. You know, Kappa Block, I said it a long time ago, or at least it was attributed to him saying it. I'm sure many chess players have said it before him, but he's the most famous guy to have said it, so people give him the credit. But he said, uh, position uh, first over material. Okay, position first, then material. So here's a situation where Grandmaster or, or the white player rather violates that principle. He goes after the rook in the corner. And neglects his development, leaves his king behind, and everything. And so this is what happens: King e2, king gets caught in the middle, and then the knights come flooding in. And nice game by Agdestein, and Black is forced to, forced to resign. Again, like I said, it's not these games aren't for deep analysis, but just for you to just see what happens when Black. Uh, has its way. You see the destruction, the breakdown of the, of the white center, right? And then you see the uh, uh, rapid peace activity uh, from black. So black either works around the center, right? That is um, that is crippled, right, and um, blockaded, or black destroys the center altogether. So the center is a major, major uh, theme, especially in this opening. Here's another one from the uh, 34th Olympiad. Black player here is Tu Hong Thong versus a player named uh, N A E S Nays. Again, we're gonna blitz through this so you can see. So development is looking normal here. Everything looks respectable here. Immediate attack on the center. The F6. E takes. Bishop takes F6. Now again, be prepared as Black to take on an isolated uh, E pawn. Okay, so you have to understand that comes with the with with this opening, right? White has a huge center, black in this line, you know, uh, castles on the same side of the board, and f6 is one of the uh, methods of tearing down the center. 
So you must be prepared to take take on this uh, this challenge of the having an isolated pawn. Okay. Oh, white has good development, nice position, and so does black. Okay, except black has this isolated uh, pawn here. Knight b4, so the tactics uh, begin here. C5 is played, and this allows a nice outpost for the white knight. Excuse me, the black knight. Knight takes, knight takes, and now bishop g5. Bishop e4. Bishop takes f6. Queen takes f6. Rook f1. Knight comes in. Knight e4. And now some tactics right here. After knight e4 is a uh, um allows this tactical blow right here. You should be able to see it pretty easy. After rook takes d4, the queen is deflected, and then the knight on e2 is um is hanging. So it's kind of like uh the queen is overworked here. The queen is put in a position where she's protecting the pawn on d4 and the um, the bishop on e2. This is why knight g4 was played instead, but it's too late at this point. Rook takes d2, knight takes rook takes f6, and uh, white was forced to resign. Okay, another again another miniature, but the point the point is is the destruction of the uh the white the white center and in this case the center wasn't really destroyed was it right but what we see is that the center was was fixed and rend rendered uh immobile and if you if you make the pawn the center pawns immobile then they just become targets all right they lose their value if they're if they're uh immobilized black does a good job here of doing that and notice his pieces of are uh, uh developed Okay, so white has more space, but look at the look at the um, look at the the pawn value in the center. The D pawn is just blockaded. C pawn's not really doing nothing, right? Black's pieces are not restricted. Okay, so here is like an equal position until um, black blunders. Excuse me, white blunders. Let's go on. Black player here is Mihail Suba, twenty five oh seven, versus a player named Totosa Amate. Again, these are miniatures, so you're going to see a lot of mistakes, and this is good because we want to see what it looks like when black gets to, gets to do what he wants to do. Again, his c5 attacking the center. Remember, I was saying there's different ways. Some players will choose f6. Some players will play with the pieces first attacking the center, but some players will um, uh, keep this pawn, the c pawn, unblocked and use it to attack c5. c5 is more provocative, okay? And then sometimes you'll see a combination of approaches. You'll see f6 and c5. So here's an example with c5 being played. Immediate stress on the center. So a3 here. C takes d4. A takes b4. D takes e3. C5. Knight 6, d7. Immediate. Notice the immediate switch to the attack here on the e pawn. Now black has to be careful not to allow a knight or something right here in d6. So queen d6, knight c6, bishop b5, rook c8, castles, queen e7, knight to g5, a5 undermining the uh, c pawn here. And now notice again, black's assault on the center uh, does not stop here. And just for you new people, of course, black doesn't capture here because then uh, white would just be winning after queen takes d7. A5 here. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this this alleviates uh, black's problem. Black was already good here anyway. But after queen takes e7, king takes e7. Black has nothing to worry about, and this is what what a uh, black a uh, white was relying on is this combination right here, to deflect the king away from the protection here. And after this, after king takes f7, rook takes d7, then um, black 
you know, uh, is a little worse here. However, after knight takes f7, there's simply a takes b4 attacking the uh, knight here. Okay, and now the issue is, say, I don't know, let's just throw the knight somewhere. Right, let's say a move like knight a2, then, you know, this again, the center is just destroyed. The rest of the, the center just starts to fall apart. This this pawn is weak. This knight has to go somewhere. So what happens is after a takes b4, the position sort of starts to collapse. This is why black gives up, the, white gives up the exchange. King takes d7. Knight takes h8, gets it back. And simply b takes c3. And after knight f7, and notice black didn't even bother to capture the knight. Uh, because after knight f7, he resigned because the next move coming is rook to a8. Okay. With the idea of just simply uh, playing here. So for example, rook a8. Um, let's check there. Right, attack this guy and let's say. Trying to move the knight out, then rook a1. Rook a8. Let's play b, take c3. And then you got this problem with the rook here. If the king b2, so you escape mate, but then you drop the rook. So this is why after knight f7, uh, white just simply resigned. Because the rook a8 is coming, and you either you get mated or you just give up the rook in the corner. Let's keep going. <clears throat> This is one of my favorite uh, Alakine players, uh, Alexander uh, Fear. Uh, it's rated 25-22 at the time versus Italian player uh, Bruno uh, Malavazzi. This is from 2007. Get right into it. And here we see, again, the same thing. Attack, vigorous attack against the center, but with the pieces this time. Not, not so much the pawns, right? So we see the knight and queen attacking on d4. Now here, again, normal line is bishop e3. And this is a good game to illustrate why you see bishop e3 and not this early, um, you know, this early uh, bringing out of the knight. Because this is exactly what white wants, excuse me, what black wants, is to pin this, this knight immediately. This immediately puts strain on the white center as the knight comes out to protect. Now the bishop is threatening to um, take away this knight. And now d4 is no longer protected. So bishop e3, e6, bishop e2, and now the knight is gone. And this is exactly falls right into black's hand, hands. That's why you never see this knight coming out this early like that. You always see bishop e3 first. Okay, so now you learn a little something about the theory. So knight g4, bishop e3, e6, bishop e2, the knight is gone. Bishop takes f3. And now you see the problem here. This knight takes c4. And black is already better here. And again, I wanted you to be able to see what happens when black has its way. The other alternative is g takes f3. Okay, which fortifies the center a little bit, but takes away the, uh, you know, the uh, cover on the black uh, queen uh, king side over here. So this move will be played almost instantly. And then the queen is all in the uh, harassing the dark squares, etc. And Black's idea is uh, simple. He's going to be castling soon and putting even more pressure uh, on this um, on this uh, pawn here. Okay, so uh, White is in a lot of trouble here already. So he opts to sacrifice his pawn. Bishop takes, knight takes c4. And this is White's idea. Bishop takes c6. B takes c6. Queen b3. Okay, bishop b4 check, knight takes e3 is very, is the simplest move right here, knight takes c3, queen takes c3, and then again hit the center with c5, okay, you really can't, can't beat that, but bishop b4 uh, was chosen, 
and after queen takes b4 knight takes e3 is winning also and of course you have all kind of threats here here with the uh check of course attacking the rook and the queen queen d2 right looks like it has everything under control but king is unprotected so check right and this is one of the downsides of playing f4 so always keep that in mind too uh you know as you're making mental notes or written notes uh what have you is f4 okay again you see it in the birds opening the weakening of the uh queen side you see it in all types of uh, different situations like when in the sicilian uh white plays austrian attack uh you know with uh f4 uh the diagonal the h4 to e1 diagonals often uh a sore spot a weak spot for white so queen h4 is played and this is one of the oldest tactics in the book right here the only move here uh for white is king e2 here but after king e2 then the knight can just capture here okay so it's a busted game Steady plays G3 and falls with the real old school, uh, you know, challenge on a uh, attack on the rook and then the threat of uh, check here at the same time. So he's forced to resign to save that game. Another uh, Alicon player, French Grandmaster J.M. Uh, DeGrave, 25-23. And this took place in, uh, in 2008 against a player named... Paris, right? It's French, French uh, Open. So e4, knight f6, and Paris uh, is rated about 1800 here. So we're looking at a 2500 players with the black pieces going against the 1800 with the white pieces. Okay, so here again, normal stuff, attacking the center. This player knows a little bit of theory. Plays bishop e3 instead of knight f3. So bishop f5 comes out. Knight c3. And again, keep in mind, notice the the reluctance of white to play knight f3. You'll see moves like this, knight c3 or bishop e2 first. Because the uh, white doesn't want to get pinned here. Right? And doesn't want usually want that trade. At least not on black's terms. e6, bishop e2. Again, this player knows the opening. Is white, right? He's an 1800 player, and that's a problem. You know, it's another video altogether. That's another problem with a lot of players under, um, under a uh, master level, especially under expert level, is that there's they study the opening too much, right? They study the opening, you know, and they're strong in the opening like grandmasters, and then they start playing them as, as the game goes on to the middle game, the end game, they get weaker and weaker. Like, here's a perfect, you know, perfect opening by white. Now, it's equal, but. This is this is how you should play. Right? He's delaying this knight coming out. He bring the bishop out first. You know the center is 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 um, you know being stabilized solely. But watch what happens. Queen d7. Right, one of the good good moves. Right, you can't play bishop g4 now because this knight isn't out yet. Queen d7 is a good alternative here. With the idea, of course, of castle and queen side. Bishop b4 is also good. The classical classical move, and usually black will castle um, uh, on the king side and and play the idea with f6. Here, queen d7 is played, queen d2, and you had this double queen side castling. All right, so far so good. Bishop b4. Okay, so there's a lot of tension in this position here because the center is not really is not mobile for for white. And this is what I was talking about earlier. If the center is not mobile, then the uh, pawns just simply become uh, liabilities. Okay? It's kind of like if you have a business and you have a store stocked full of goods and the goods aren't selling. Right? Then it's just a, then it's just liability. Right? So especially if you have food right in the store. Say you have like shelves full of bread and nobody's buying the bread. It's just live now. It's just money just going out the window, right? The bread starts getting moldy or whatever. You know, you start having to sell it at discount prices because, you know, you you have to make something off it before it goes bad, right? Or you just have to throw it out. It's the same way with the pawns. Like the pawns have to be mobile. They want to move forward, right? They want to restrict the uh, 
the uh, you want to use them to restrict the opponent's uh, uh, position, right? Nimzovich in his famous book, or not so famous book, Blockade, right? His famous book is My System, but Blockade is another pamphlet that he wrote years ago that I have. And in Blockade, he says there are three reasons for a point advance in the center. One is to create a wedge in the position. The idea of a wedge can be seen in, say, for instance, the King's Indian attack, right? Uh, you look at those positions where the pawn is pushed to e5, and the, the, there's a wedge between the king side and the queen side, and and white uses that wedge to attack on the uh, king side as the coordination between the black pieces is divided. That's one reason. It's creating a wedge. Second reason is to restrict the opponent's pieces, right? You see that right in the beginning. When e4, knight f6 is played, and e5 is played, what is that doing? That's attacking, right? And forcing the knight off of his good square, which is f6. Okay. Again, that's set re reason number two. To restrict the opponent's pieces. Okay. And then the third the third reason. Right. That um, that Nim the Nimzovich states. Right. So you have the wedge. You have the um, the restricting of the opponent's pieces. And the other the other one is uh, to, to press forward. Right. Eventually, you want to create a pass pawn to be mobile. OK, so when these functions aren't being completed, those pawns just become a liability. Right. They have to be protected. They have to be maintained anyway. Right. But now they're just standing there. And if you look at this position. Right. White has delayed the development of this knight so long. Right. Adding reinforcement to D4 and E5. That these pawns can't be pushed. Notice if this pawn comes forward, this this pawn is weak. Okay? This pawn moves forward, then there's a big hole in the center. Okay? So and then this pawn is naturally blocked. So the pawns start becoming a burden for White here. And he quickly collapses after the opening. Right? And then in an attempt to relieve the pressure. On this position, he plays this move, a3, okay, which immediately loses the game. Knight a5, and now you have this, this threat of, of forking the king and queen as well as checkmate. So, he saves his queen and loses the uh, queen. I mean, loses his king in checkmate, okay. That's 13 moves. So let's look at it again real fast. Just like that. It's over. <laughs> All right. And we're going to be wrapping up soon. Here's a, here's a game from another Alakon expert, uh, Alexander uh, Baburin. Rated 25-34 with the black pieces. Uh, going against a player named Dennis O'Donohue, who was 1961 at the time. You see slightly offbeat variation. Again, same principle attacking the center, but this time it was C5. Very provocative play. And usually you'll see really strong grandmasters play like this against uh, weaker players because, one, they could get away with it. Um, but playing offbeat, they know that a lot of players at this rating will study the heck out of openings. So they'll come with the sideline that, you know, that the player probably didn't study. And then they can... Um, you know, have better chance of securing a quick victory. So here's C5, D5, and now E6. Okay. And now, if you're you're if you're not familiar with this, your gut reaction is to try to cramp the opponent and play a move like E6, like D6. And here you're already busted. If you play D6 here, you're already busted at the queen H4. Check. Boom. It's a wrap. Okay. The king has to move, and then you're gonna drop this pawn. Okay. And that's the thing, especially if you, uh, you know, mess around with this position in Blitz. You'll probably catch a lot of people playing D6 as a as a gut reaction because it looks good, right? Your your center is solidified. You The person can't, can't develop on these squares, okay? After E6, Knight F3 is played. E takes D5, still attacking the center. C takes D5, and now the move C4, attacking the queen. Queen is forced to move, and now 
Again, the center is attacked. Just think of that theme constantly. Destroy, destroy, destroy the center. Knight c3, queen d7. Right, so white is already um, being offered an end game here as black will have a better end game. Black wants to keep attacking, so white uh, white now is forced to stay in the middle of the board. And now you can see the end coming quickly as black forces the white king uh, to stay in the center of the board. And here's an, another example of the vicious counterattack in the center and then the playing... Um, playing in the center and even though black white has a pawn in this in the center of the board still that pawn is a liability okay let's go on let's go on and show you another one here's a game from um 2016 from the bobinick cup again uh grandmaster mirozev 25 26 Going against a player, uh, Sheriff of. Again, we go real quick through this one. And there's that move I was telling you about. When the knight comes out early. Right? So he spends a little time to get rid of that knight. Because getting rid of that knight allows black to put more pressure on the center. So G takes F3. The castle. And now you got three pieces against D4. Right, this knight is now gone. So c5 is provoked. That's no problem for black as he just occupies the center. Knight d5, bishop f2. Now a good move here is uh, knight f4. Definitely, again, revealing the uh, three pieces against, against the center again. So knight f4 will have to be met by bishop b5 to keep you know this knight from capturing here a6 here here and now you're threatening bishop takes uh, c5 here and you also have pressure here so probably something like this here and then now you have the f6 idea so you see the constant I show you that variation so you can see the constant harassment of the center here, f6 was played right away. After bishop f2, he just went in for f6 instead of playing knight f4. Again, same idea. Constant harassment of the center. G takes f6. Queen c2. Bishop comes out. This prevents, of course, uh, the triple zeros, right? The castle queen side. b4. It's always a dangerous proposition trying to attack with your own king uh, in the middle of the board. Knight e3. And now that the cent the pawn just drops in the center. And we can see again the king just stuck in the middle of the board. And knight d4 and the game again is over. So I think by now you probably all get the point of uh you probably all get the point of uh the opening is black here here will be the last game this is uh between uh, uh Lanier Dominguez 27 12 so you see a high high level grandmaster playing the Alicon against a player named Tongue against this player is 1922 and you see Dominguez Perez going with this offbeat line remember again this is something a lot of strong grandmasters will do especially when playing weaker players they know a lot of weaker players are booked up with chess base and all this type of theory and stuff, and they'll come with an offbeat line. But again, don't be um, confused by this. Remember just the general principles. Remember, the general pr principle is the destruction and harassment and demobilization of the white center if you're playing black. So G G5 is just another example. Whether you're doing it with the knight C6, right, using peace play, C5, using the pawn, F6, or in this case, G5, you're doing the same exact thing. Harassment of the center of, of white. And you're trying to either destroy that center uh, totally, and if you can't do that, you're trying to fix the center so that it's immobile and becomes a liability. Or you're trying to 
put your pieces around the center. In other words, the, the pawns have advanced to ineffective places to where and they're blocked and now they cannot really affect what's going on and black just simply plays around those pawns. Let's see what happens in this game. Knight c3, bishop g7, knight f3, bishop g4. So notice the pieces are now effective, right? Black pieces are effective on the center. Notice how those pieces are not restricted at all by the white center. Okay, the bishop's on g4. Okay, putting pressure against the white center. Bishop on g7. Again, x-raying right through the dark squares in the middle. Knight on b6. Hitting the uh, c4 uh, pawn and affecting uh, d5 from a distance. And so now, black only needs to get, you know, decide what he's going to do with his knight here on uh, b8. Bishop e2. G takes f4. Black, of course, anticipating white castling over here. Now we'll have the G file open. Bishop takes. Knight comes out. And again, more pressure on the center here. Castle. D takes E5. B takes E5. Knight takes E5. Knight takes E5. So a bunch of exchanges. B Bishop takes E um, E2. Of course, black would like to, uh, white would like to play queen, be able to play queen e2, right, and have his queen uh, developed for him off the back rank. However, since the center is under scrutiny here, he has to play knight takes e2. This allows black to go into an end game. Bishop takes e5, d takes e5, queen takes d1, rook a d1. Okay. Now, black opted to play e6 here. He could have just simply uh, snatched his pawn. But he might have ran into some complications, perhaps at the rook c1, knight e3, rook f3, and then he would have to play knight d5 to keep this uh, c7 pawn uh, protected. Okay, and then you could have knight c3, for example. Knight takes, rook f c6 would be three and let's say castle so you can see there's a little bit of initiative there from white but i think black is black is able to snatch this pawn okay you see he's just up a pawn here and white's attack kind of fades out a little bit instead he just decided to keep keep it moving with e6 black play a white play rook d4 good move knight d7 and now rook d8, knight c3. And you might say, how is this going to be a miniature? Let's see. Knight b5, a6. And here, Grandmaster sets a trap here. Like it's really tempting to take here. But you have to think is how you're going to extract the, how you're going to get the knight out. So here, Probably knight c3 and knight d4 is better. Instead, he takes with check. King e7. And now he plays knight d5 check. And his idea is to give up the knight for two pawns. And perhaps, you know, have some kind of brilliancy against the grandmaster. But it's just not enough. C takes d5. Knight c5. Now d6. King e8. Rook e4. F4, I'm sorry, rook g7, protecting the f7. Again, still harassing the center. The center. <laughs> and rook c8, rook e2, and rook c5. Again, the final harassment of the center. And here, black had enough. Excuse me, white had enough. There's no compensation uh, for that piece. But I like how the position ends, the game ends, because you see the two pieces uh t still attacking e5 uh at the end so now uh i hope you enjoyed that video please like subscribe comment if there's any openings you want to look at in this manner just let me know i look at any any opening and it might be something i don't i don't play um and we'll look at it together i've been playing the alicon's uh defense a very long time and the reason i mean for years uh so i know it inside inside and out and i know it's not the best opening of course at the top levels but the reason why i play it is because i don't have i don't have the time to study tons and tons of of, of theory so 
I play Alicon Defense is black, and it's you know I can control you know at least I know where I'm going with E4 against E4. You know I don't have to study like ton, tons of uh, opening systems, so I enjoy uh, Alicon Defense from from either side actually. Um, so yeah, watch this in combination with the the first video I made. I'll link them together of uh, the Alicon Defense. This is just a four pawns variation, and um, so you can see what it looks like when White has his way. Right, you'll see the white side also. This video is for the black side. The first video is for the white side. So look at those together. Right, if you're interested in this opening, this is my recommendation. Look at both of these videos, then start playing some uh, speed games, one minute games, and three minute and five minute blitz games. Okay, play a bunch of those and just get a feel for the general tactics in both positions. Play both sides. Once you start, you know, getting a little handle on the position, then go in your database or whatever start looking at some more competitive games okay look at some games a little bit longer not you know 80 move games but look at moves you know games about 40 moves or something still with the same result of this whatever side you're trying to pick up first so if you're trying to learn white look at some 40 move games where white where, where white wins okay if you're studying the black side again do the same thing where the games go on a little further and then start picking up the middle game strategies, right? Little by little. And then go and do the same thing. Play some Blitz, right? You know, um, not Bullet but Start playing Blitz. You know, you need a little more time to think now in the middle game, right? Start playing a little longer games. Three minutes, five minutes. You know, maybe throw a 10-minute game in there, okay? And then, you know, do that for a while and then you should be good in the middle game. And then, after that, then you do the same exact thing, but with long games. Start looking now. Now you should have a good foundation, enough to where you can start looking at some games between some, you know, some GMs, IMs, and then have the understanding. And then start looking at, start looking at those games and start following it to the end game. Okay, and then you you should have this this attack down the four this four points. And if um you learn this as white, you'll you'll definitely you know have good um. You know some good good uh, results. Very very aggressive uh, uh, game, and Black has to be prepared. So anyway, this video has been long enough. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I'll link it up, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Thank you, and please support my channel by clicking the links below.